Hey everybody and welcome back to Tens of Motorsports and as you guys can tell, this is not a BMW, this is in fact a Porsche. So this is the 986 generation boxer, the very first generation boxer. This does have the 2.7 uh, flat six in it. It is a slightly later car. I believe they started these in the mid 90s uh, Something like that. Well, we have just recently purchased this car and we'll be working on it um, on our channel now I do have this video titled uh, Crank no start and the reason is because this car is giving us a crank no start And I want to go over all of the issues and all the things that we have been doing and uh, we're actually as of right now Just letting some fuel dry that we had to let out of the fuel rail and uh, we're gonna see if it'll start. Before we get into that, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, like if you enjoy this type of content. Also make sure to check out our Instagram, Tenza underscore motorsports. We do giveaways and all you have to do to be part of those is be following us on Instagram. So this car right here has been giving us a crank no start. Now the previous owner had a um, operational crank no start. So when it would get up to temperature, He'd get, a, he'd get a no start. So it'd be like if you drove to like a gas station, you park your car, turn it off, fill up with fuel, and then it won't start. Most of what he was seeing, the symptoms, was the crank positioning sensor. And on these cars, you have your crank position sensor, the IMS bearing, and the fuel pump relay. Those three things you hear all the time. One is really big. So the IMS bearing was done on this car at 73,000 miles, uh, along with the clutch, because you have to pull all that apart. And now it's just starting to get up into the mileage. We're at 130, where things just start to go bad. So the fuel pump was bad and we pulled it all the way apart and we're testing it, physically actually running it to a battery, dried it off so that we weren't sparking and causing it to light on fire or anything like that. And we were actually running it to a battery and flip the polarity and either way it just would lock up. So it'd go and it just would stop. So we ended up getting a new fuel pump, put the new fuel pump in there and it still won't start. Crank position sensor still won't start. So we've been going through and checking to see what's been going on. So the first thing that we did was we took a wire and actually bypassed the fuel pump relay. And the reason we did that is because we wanted to make sure that the fuel pump was running. And if your relay is bad, the pump won't turn on at all. But just because the pump won't turn on doesn't mean your relay is necessarily bad. Uh, as soon as it sees pressure and it has enough priming pressure, stuff like that, then it, it won't run. The other thing that we thought it was was maybe because when we would turn on the fuel pump, we weren't getting any fuel back at the fuel rail. We thought, well, if we're not getting any fuel, that means that somewhere between the fuel pump and the fuel rail, something's gone wrong. We got the fuel pump running, no fuel in the back. So then what we did was we were like, okay, well, we'll, we'll pull the fuel filter out. And the fuel filters, I've never personally had a fuel filter be so plugged up that it didn't want to run the car. Uh, it is possible, it has happened, but it's, I've never seen it happen. And we pulled the fuel filter out and it was black. All of the, the gas was black, it smelled terrible and it was all over the floor now, but that was a good thing for us to check because we wanted to make sure that we weren't having any issues with getting the fuel through the lines. So we replaced that. So we actually go into the fuel pump and we force it to run out here instead of in where the, where the uh, relay is and it just wasn't running. We pull it out of the car and put it into a five gallon bucket and start to run it and it shoots up, starts spraying fuel out like it should. We put it back in the car, it won't run. So the reason was the fuel pump itself, the wires had actually been plugged in backwards. The polarity was backwards. So the fuel pump was running backwards. And where we didn't replace, I didn't replace the pump, the, the previous owner did, that's where we were having issues. So if you're having a crank no start, the car wants to run. We used starter fluid and it ran. Do that very first. We should have done that very first. We really didn't waste a lot of time before that happened. I think that was like our second day after just kind of playing and digging into the car. We made sure to drain the fuel tank just in case it had bad gas. It hadn't been running for about a year. Go get yourself some starter fluid and go make sure your car runs. If your starter fluid makes the car run, then now all you got to do is just make sure that you're getting fuel from the proper fuel tank. So let's go and uh, see if this will run. We'll go see if it'll drive. Uh, we'll get some b-roll footage of it and then i'll talk a little bit more about our plans so if you're here for the crank no start portion of the video that's where it ends that's where we were fighting and just hopefully that information relayed onto somebody else uh, will be helpful so let's get this thing started i got a tail light out yes all right so what you heard that that little noise at the end there was the starter motor but we are in fact running 
So pretty crazy. Let's go, uh, let's go take this thing for a quick spin. Okay, sorry, it is, uh, it's pretty dark outside, but we are gonna start and drive this car. You hear it starts right up, and then uh, reverse. It's a little bit different than the Beamers. Gives you a digital readout of the miles per hour, I think that's cool. 60 degrees outside, so it's pretty accurate there. Um, that, that's actually, the, the car's been resprayed at least once, and uh, I noticed they sprayed the ambient air temperature. Maybe we'll do like a zero to 60 or something. This road out here is 55, so. There was 60 in second gear. Sounds fantastic. Wow, hey, you know what? For having no modifications, like any power modifications or anything like that done, and honestly, like the top, if it weighs any less, if the top weighs any less than the convertible top, it's so minimal. This is this is such a good platform. And with that engine in the middle of the car instead of hanging out over the back like the 911s do, I think we can really have some fun with this car. Um, I just, I don't even know where to start because there's so many fun things to do with this. Uh, the only real downside is that the uh, power upgrades on this are gonna be, it's either like full on $10,000 supercharger turbocharger kit or you know a, a intake so it's either everything or almost nothing i'm hoping that we can gain some horsepower just doing some bolt-ons and if anybody out there knows how to tune these please let me know the 986 boxers the 2.7 liter boxers if we can get like launch control or something like that that would be fantastic uh, we have done some research on it and i just do not see like any I just don't really see anything on the on the custom tuning side of this. So if anybody knows uh, who or anybody out there that does, please let us know. Comment that down below uh, because we are definitely interested in getting this thing custom tuned. That's fantastic. All right. Well, let's go take a little bit more uh, look on the outside of the car. We've got some more details for you guys coming up. And we'll get to that. All right, so we've driven it like a half a mile so far, and this is gonna be an awesome build. So I just kinda wanna go over the car. It's a 2000, it's a 2.7 liter boxer motor. It does have a Cayman top on it, which is really cool. This actually came with it. Uh, it does have some body work that needs to be done. I'm not sure if that'll, a little bit of fiberglass work there. A little spot right there. Other than that, we really like the top. Uh, there is some adjustments that we can do on it. When you go to lift it up, it likes to buckle right here. And uh, yeah, so we'll roll around back here. We're definitely gonna change out the tail lights. Uh, we were thinking about doing the headlights, they're pretty expensive, but um, we're thinking about doing the tail lights. This is not a Boxster S, even though it's got an S on it. Somebody put that on there. Here's the wing, that still works. Um, this car was purchased for $2,000. And the reason for that was because, well, first off, it's a salvage title car. So at best, you're worth 55 to 65% of its original value. And reason number two is because it was not starting and we could not seem to figure out what it was. And like I said, that's, that's what it ended up being. You just gotta be really careful about the polarity on your new fuel pumps. Um, this car has the center exhaust we're probably gonna do a dual tip on that with a muffler delete. We are probably gonna go full track car with this at some point. This uh, track car from the standpoint of like, kind of like what we've been doing, where it's still a bit street legal. And uh, so that'd be coilovers. We'll probably do an interior weight reduction. It's already got, let me see if we can get inside here. It's starting to get a little dark. Um, it's already got a roll bar. Not sure if you guys can see that back in there. It's already got a pair of bucket seats. 
sorry again the lights we're getting pretty pretty low on light out here um, the seats are more of a racing style seat it is the manual which is nice and yeah that's i mean we're really excited to have it on the on the channel this is definitely going to be a big build for us like an intake a tune exhaust kind of that kind of the basic list we're hoping to see if we can if we can gain like another like 30 horse and uh, with a weight reduction if we can lose another like 300 pounds or so which should be fairly simple this already comes with the similar power to our e46s that we've run on the channel most of the time yeah i really appreciate everybody so much for watching uh, this will be on the channel more often make sure you are staying tuned if you are interested in watching this build thanks again so much for watching we'll see everybody in the next video